he was happy because ogres like nasty. On his seventh birthday, his parents sat him down to talk, just as all ogre parents have for hundreds of years before.
get it. Attention all fairy tale thing. Your welcome has officially worn out. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see this far quad guy right now. Get you all off of my swamp and back where you came from. Yay! <laughs> Oh no, I am not lost. 
I'm just trying to find the best route to Dula. Oh, Dula, Dula, I know Dula. You've got to let me show you the way, because I am like a GPS with fur. I'll be fine on my own, thanks. If I know there's sign in the room. Hey, didn't you hear what they said? Man, yeah. this place is going to Stepford. we got to join forces. Otherwise, they're going to lock me up. And I can not go back in a cage. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I did six years in solitary for impersonating a pinata. Rah! Whoa, that was really scary. And if you don't mind me saying, that doesn't do the trick, your breath will certainly get the job done. Listen, donkey, take a look at me. What am I? Really green? No, I'm an ogre. You know, grab your torch and pitchforks. Doesn't that bother you? Nope. Really? Really, really. Man, I like you. What's your name? Uh, Shrek. Well, you know what I like about you, Shrek? You got that whole, I don't care what anybody thinks of me thing. I like that. I respect that. You all right. Oh, good. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm ready. Bring in the cookie. Something that isn't going to put me in a body cast. 
Donkey, look, Lord Farquaad's castle. Didn't they tell you I'd find it? <coughs> Much, isn't it? You think he might be compensating for something? <laughs> oh, whatever. Let's just find this Farquaad guy and get out of here. I want to stop at the gift shop and get t-shirts! We are not stopping for t-shirts. <laughs>
does. <laughs>
There's a lot more to ogre than most people typically think. Uh, example? Example. Uh, okay. Oh, ogres are like onions. They stink. Yes, no. They make you cry. No. Oh, oh, leave them out in the sun and they get all brown and start sprouting little white hairs. No, layers. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it? We both have layers. Oh, you both have layers. You know, not everybody likes onions. Parfaits. Everybody likes parfaits and they have layers. Have you ever met a person and you say, and they say, hey, let's go get some parfaits. And they say, hell no, I don't like no parfaits. Parfaits are delicious. I don't care. Ogres are not like parfaits. Parfaits can be the most delicious thing on this whole planet. You know, this may just turn into the longest day of my entire life. I got the perfect remedy for that. Oh no, no, I am not interested.
donkey. That'll do.
excuse me, I'll be on my way. What's the matter with you? You got something in your eye? I know princess, but he wants me. No green beauty, but he wants me. Yeah. 
great, and thy heart is pure, I am eternally in your debt. <coughs> and where would a brave knight be without his noble steed, of course? Hear that? She called me a noble steed. She thinks I'm a steed. All right, brave knight, the battle is won. You may remove your helmet. Uh, no. Why not? Um, I, I have helmet hair. <laughs> Please, so I wouldn't look upon the face of my rescuer. Oh, oh no, you wouldn't. Yes. But how will you be able to kiss me? What? That wasn't in the job description. Maybe it's a perk. No, it's destiny. A princess shall be rescued by a brave knight, and then they share true love's first kiss. With Shrek? You think that Shrek is your true love? What's so funny? Let's just say, I'm not your type. Of course you are, and I remove your helmet. I really don't think that's a good idea. Just take it off. I'm not going to. Take it off. No. Now! Okay, easy. As you command, your highness. You're an ogre? You were expecting Prince Charming? Well, yes, actually. I'm supposed to be rescued by my true love, not by some ogre and his pet. Watch for a noble steed. You're not supposed to be an ogre. Listen, Princess, I was sent to rescue you by Lord Farquaad. He's the one who wants to marry you. Oh, then why didn't he come rescue me? That's a good question. You should ask him that when we get there tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh my gosh, it's almost sunset. And? I didn't realize it was so late. We should probably make camp. Camp? You just escaped. Yes, and I found the whole ordeal quite exhausting. I need to rest immediately. That's too bad, because we're going to keep going. I need to find somewhere to camp right now. Very well. There's a cave over there. Shrek, that's no place for a princess. It'll do. Well, gentlemen, I bid you good night. Mommy made you a bedtime story? Because I will. I said good night. She seems nice. <laughs> Viking, 
daring, well smelling like a herring. Upon a Viking ship, I sail away. I see the world. I reach the farthest reaches. I feel the wind. I taste the song.
day full of promise and fresh start. And the first thing I'd like to do is apologize for my behavior yesterday. We obviously got off on the wrong foot, and I'd like to make it up to you. You what? Of course, you did rescue me, after all. So, I got a basket of berries for the trip, and I made you each a daisy chain. These are beautiful, princess Thank you. Aren't they beautiful, Shrek? Uh, You'll grow to love them, I promise. Lead the way. So, princess, uh, do you often wake up so early? So what if I do? I don't know. It's, it's just not exactly what I expected. Well, maybe you shouldn't judge people before you get to know them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about my groom-to-be, Lord Farquaad. What's he like? Let's just say men of Farquaad's stature are in short supplies. Really? Yes, yes. He's a little intimidating. Well, he must be. And yet, very good at small talk. What are you guys doing? What? Just saying, you might want to lower your expectations a little. Yeah, like three feet or so. All right, yuck it up. Doesn't bother me. Not today. After a lifetime of misery, things are finally going my way. Yeah, lifetime of misery. Okay. You chuckled. When I said lifetime of misery, you chuckled. Did I? Yes. Look, I'm sure it was very difficult living in a dragon-guarded tower. It was. I'm sure. All right, then. Although, it must have been nice to have a roof and a cozy bed, which is more than I had when I left home. You're not actually comparing yourself to what I endured. I'm just saying, you don't exactly corner the market on unhappy childhood. There are things you don't know, you know, about me, about how rough I had it. What, you run out of shampoo a couple of times? I mean about my life. In that cushy tower. Cushy? Are you kidding? I had nothing in that tower.
mama was born. <laughs> Dad, so daddy was grumpy. Thank you. 
by day one way, by night another. This shall be the norm till you find true love's first kiss and take love's true form. That's beautiful. It's a curse. I've had it since I was a girl. A curse? A witch cast a spell on me. So now every night when the sun goes down, I become this, this horrible, ugly beast. It's okay. You're not that ugly. I'm not gonna lie. You are pretty ugly. But you only look like this at night. Shrek, you look like this 24-7. Wait a minute. This is perfect. Perfect? Donkey, if Lord Farquaad finds out I look like this, he'll never marry me. So? So, I have to kiss my true love. It's the only thing that can break the spell and make me beautiful again. <laughs> well, you know, Shrek's an ogre, and you, uh, you've got a lot in common. Shrek? Yeah, I think that if he knew this, No, then... he can't know, and you can't tell him. Honestly, you won't tell. Fine, but you should tell him.
tell me anything. I heard enough last night. You heard what I said? Every word. Especially, who could love such a hideous, ugly beast? But I thought that wouldn't matter to you. Yeah, well, guess what? It does. Ah, oh, right on time. Princess, I brought you
think so. Um, excuse me, could we just skip to the I do's? <laughs> Go on. Do you both box like a Princess Fiona? I do. And you? I do. Yes, I thought you might. Well, you have the power vested in me. I now pronounce you king and- Stop the wedding! Shrek? What does he want? It's rude enough being alive when no one wants you. But showing up uninvited to a wedding? Fiona, I need to talk to you. Now he wants to talk to me? It's a little late for that. So if you'll excuse you, me. You, you can't marry him. And why not? Because he's only marrying you so he can be king. Fiona, that is outrageous. Don't listen to him. He's not your true love. And what do you know about true love? I, I, uh. Oh, 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 this is precious. The ogre has fallen in love with the princess. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Dork, take this abomination out of my sight. No, I mean, let's hear what the ogre has to say. Oh. It might be worth a laugh. You are awful. You heard her, ogre. Express yourself with as few grunts as possible. Why? 
slave. I'll have you locked back in that tower of yours for the rest of your days. Actually, you won't. What are you doing, you insolent beast? I will see you drawn and quartered. I am king. I will have order. Everybody move out of the way. I'm a donkey on the edge, and I have a dragon, and I'm not afraid to use it. Back off. I not touch you. I said back. <laughs> Daddy? I guess you're right. I am a freak after all. Which is a lovely thing to be in. Really, look at us. Not so bad. You know, your boy just wants to get to know us. And that's my girl who did it. All hail the dragon. <laughs> you were saying? I'm your true love, Fiona. Yeah, I know. And I'm yours. <laughs> By day one way, by night another, this shall be the norm until you find true love's first kiss and take love's true form.
everyone, I uh, would like to ask for attention for just a moment before we sing the final number, because there's still one more. Um, this being the final show, I just have a few people that I have to thank quickly. First, I'd like to thank this incredible cast. Could at the beginning of the year, and they did such an incredible job. I'm so impressed and so happy to be working with all of them, these youngsters here included. Um, to all of the parents, friends, family members who have helped out with this show, it has literally been hundreds and hundreds of volunteer hours that has made this possible. And I could not do it without the support. We could not do it without the support of so many people. There are a few people that I want to mention in particular. There are a lot of people thanked on the back of the program, and please take a moment to read that. I cannot have, take the time now to read everyone's name. But first, for this incredible dragon, I have to thank Diane Lopez, Heather Quay, and Nate Rohner. Who John Svetke and Brian Dozer with Jason Reddy. Thank you very much. <laughs> to Ken Findell, who was here for, I think, two or three nights until after 11 o'clock some evenings, helping me with all of the lighting and programming that. Thank you. and the countless hours he spends rehearsing with the kids and we split up their rehearsals in about eight different directions um, and rehearse multiple things simultaneously. I could not do it without you. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, mention Diane who has helped with, uh, as an assistant director, helped with cues and sits in front of the stage here. You can probably barely see her helping everyone with cues. Um, Gabby for helping out with the junior choir and making sure that they get where they need to be. And Vicki helping out with all of the music rehearsals and teaching countless songs to I don't know how many kids. Thank you all so much for your help. because they put in so much work into this show. The first is Heather Quay. She <laughs> helped build the dragon, helps with uh, sound, and is here for all of the rehearsals and helps me direct the show. She also masterminded and takes care of doing all of the makeup you see. She puts in an incredible amount of time. So Heather, if you could find <laughs> We couldn't do it without this community, but 
I leave you now in the hands of the cast for one more song. Yeah!